That was a tragedy, wasn't it? <laughs> Son. Mom don't want me to do this. Hog leg. Ooh, what's that? Nitro burning drag car. Piece of jewelry, isn't it? You better stop. Oh, I walked it out, didn't I? A new problem. Look at that. Mystery solved. True that? Ooh, Lord. <laughs> Cast iron. Oh, mm -hmm. snap. Look at that. A hammer and a socket. Do, 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 do. Score. Adrian's having her babies. I predicted it. <laughs> How many ugly nuggets? Shoot. That's a bummer. Good job, Mom. Back in the Disney. Three quarter racing cam. Yeah, son, the XP. I got these clamp pans. 38 year old grease. <laughs> Dual plane. Got the donkeys. Gunk in there. Exactly. That's 70. Eat your veggies. Woo! Oh, oh gosh. Incredible. I know I am. Very shiny. When I was your age. Story of my life. Tore the whole thing back down. Dry fire my carb, son. Ah! Been there, done that. Hello, oh, and you're in a hurry. Hey. What the mess? Sorry, honey. You stole my Crocs. I love the smell of spray paint. Too sleepy. Ow. <laughs> oh, come on. I found it. Hey. Wolverine. Can I feel it? No. no. Oh. Wolverine might joke her out. Woo! Go Don't stop. Crying so hard. It's the dragon wagon. Two wrongs don't make a right. And Rocky Jr. 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 Welcome back to the Sleeper Dude YouTube channel. We're back with the Galaxy Wagon here. It's a 64 Country Sedan, floor shifted manual, 289. Really cool car. We've been trying to get this thing running for over a year. We had stuck engine. We put acid in this thing and everything. In the last video, you saw that we have a bore that's gonna have to be sleeved. So we have decided we're gonna rebuild it. It's just too cool not to reuse this 289. It's the original engine, it seems like, for the car. We bought brand new pistons for it, 30 over, new bearings, new oil pump. So we are going to take this short block to the machine shop today, drop it off. It's probably gonna take a while for them to do it. Get this thing ready to go back together. So let's get this thing loaded up in the back of the truck and head down to the machine shop. Oh my gosh, this tailgate tire. Oh gosh. That was a beast. Yes, it was. You about killed me. So now we just gotta wait a few weeks to get that machine work done. We can go back and pick this thing up and start assembling it. Unfortunately, we got bad news back from the machine shop. The water jackets of all things were totally full of rust. I don't know if somebody just left straight water in this thing. They must have. He said there was no way to get all the rust out of the water passages and that it was just going to overheat if we built it, which it's nice of him to at least tell me that, you know, instead of taking my money and I mean, build the engine that wasn't going to work right. So unfortunately, it looks like our old 289 block is not salvageable. So we have decided to use a 302 that we have around here. So we're going to do a at-home build on a 302. This came out of the red Fairmont Futura. Let me go show you the block we took out of this thing and show you the engine we're going to build. But I'll give you a quick look at this thing if you hadn't seen it. Check out the floor shifted three-speed manual in there. How awesome is that? This car is really cool. How many miles does it have? It's showing 39,000, so that's probably 1,039,000 miles, if I was guessing. But, you know, it's got a couple whiskey dents, but man, you know, they're just not making them anymore. Why don't they make station wagons anymore? This may be a little beyond a whiskey dent here, but let me go show you this block, show you what's up with it. You can see how much rust is in there. And he tried knocking the freeze plugs out and jabbing up through all these holes. You can see how much rust even fell out in the truck just on the way home with this thing and moving it around. I really wanted to use this one, but there was just no way to do it. So we're going to move on to bigger and better things. So here's our new plan. This is the 302, 50, whatever that came out of that Fairmont Future right there. So I don't think it was originally out of that Fairmont, but it had been swapped into it. So. I don't know the exact year. We'll have to run the numbers during this process. It's probably like an 86 or newer 5.0 because it's got a roller cam in it from the factory. So we have a whole bunch of parts here. Now I ordered all these parts for the 289. So hopefully everything will work in this engine. We've got a comp cam. It's actually a billet roller cam. It's got the 351 firing order. Basically there's more cams available for the 351 firing order. 218, 224 at 50 thousandths. 
and 513 lift cam. We also have a set of roller lifters here that are link bar style lifters. I was planning on retrofitting this into an old engine, so that's why I got this style lifter. All these parts, I will have the part numbers in the description. We also have a timing set, retainers and locks for this thing. We got a new set of valve springs. We have push rods for it. I went ahead and got a bolt kit for it too. New ARP head bolts. We got a gasket set. I got some pulleys from Scott Drake for this thing because we ruined the pulleys that were on the old 289. So we got some nice new aluminum pulleys for this thing. They'll look a lot better than the old ones. We also got some Mr. Gasket valve covers for it. I'm a sucker for the old Finn valve covers. I think that's gonna look really cool on that car. Oh, wow. I did order some that had the hole for the vent this time. Last time I made that mistake. Oh look, it even came with bolts. I think it's gonna look pretty good when we're done. We're even planning on painting this one. Can you believe that? We are. Hopefully we don't run into too many problems with putting a later model engine into an older model Ford. I know after 82, they changed the balance, but this clutch has the same spline count as that three speed. So I'm hoping I can use this clutch. Let me know in the comments if I'm wrong, but let's tear into this engine because it was supposed to be a good runner when we got it. He said it had an aftermarket cam, but he also told me that the cam was too big for the valve spring, so I don't really know. And if you look here, you can tell somebody's been all into it. We got gooped up RTV all through here, so I really want to get into this thing and make sure we have a good engine before we put all these brand new parts in. So let's get to tearing into this. Oh, that was a good jump there. So this is called the spider. So this holds down all your retainers because these factory roller lifters have this little dog bone deal that keeps them from rotating. So we'll save these. We may end up using these in a different build. I, I try to keep everything, you know? You know, like the, the Malibu, we had trouble getting the lifters out because they mushroom. Roller yeah. lifters are the way to go. I would definitely recommend upgrading from flat tapping if you can afford to do it. A flat tapping lifter is just basically stops here. It's just completely flat. So the roller lifters, they started these in the mid eighties and pretty much put them in everything ever since. If it got messed up, it would hit that, but it could still come out. Yeah. I really like these a whole lot better than flat tapping. This thing feels like it has good cylinder walls. It's really not much of a ridge at all. I mean, we were told this was a good engine. We've never heard it actually run. I know it was in the car and he had clutch issues and pulled it out. He didn't pull it out because the engine was bad. Oh. Oh my gosh. I thought the oil pan was empty. I guess it's not empty. Guess we'll drain the oil. He's so stupid. That was a tragedy one. Yeah. And he about walked himself in the head of the engine, didn't he? Yeah. This is a Fox body oil pan. So look, it has a sump in the back and the front. It has two drain plugs. Wow. I don't know why they had the little hump in the front. It really doesn't make much sense yeah. to me either. Just in case if you couldn't get it all in the back. There's someone in the front. What's that but look like? Like on flat ones, you have to like tilt the engine. Look, it looks pretty new, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. It's not and black. It's not gritty. Doesn't look glittery. Yeah, that wool's not been in there long. Let's see if I can do this without spilling. I know it's got some coolant still in it. It must not have much coolant in it, huh? Oh, oh, it gets you. These are brand new oil pan bolts. Look how short the skirt of the block is. Yeah. It's so short. I don't know what that is, but okay. The deck height is really short. Oh my lord, I'm denning it. Oh, it's old filter. I can't take these. Is there a reason why you're it? tightening it? Oh. <laughs> Remember, I have the tiger. Really yeah. I want it. I want it. I want it. You want to? Okay. Yeah. You got this one. I have the tiger. There you go. Creed. Good job. You can do it with your hands now. Listen, if you're like me, you hate spending money on stuff like this belt right here that you pay good money for and then the thing just ends up wearing out on you super quick. Well, that's why I switched to the Groove Belt, which is made by today's sponsor, Groove Life. The Groove Belt, it's magnetic buckle, okay? So all you have to do is do that. You never have to adjust this thing. It's actually a little stretchy, which helps with people like me that like to eat, okay? Sometimes you need a little stretch in your belt. And this belt has what they call stiff tech, which is just a fancy way of saying there's no annoying flap out here you gotta tuck in or anything. You just put this belt on and forget about it. And whatever happens to your Groove Life products, they're here to back you up. They have a 94 year warranty. So this is the last belt you'd ever have to buy. This thing's perfect for working on your old station wagon, herding goats, or you could probably even wear this thing to the old church house. And don't think they only make belts 
They make wallets, they make rings, they make watch bands, AirPod cases, and much more. Let me give you a close up on this thing. My wife has not stopped complimenting me ever since I got this. They got all different colors depending on what you like. Look how that thing snaps together. I didn't expect this, you know? Really high quality. I love how you don't have to adjust it every time you put it on. Thing just snaps right in place. And one thing I really like about this company is they're based right here in Tennessee, just like I am. They're just a couple hours from us. It's good to support local businesses, not send all your money overseas to some other country. It's time to bring your belt into the 21st century. Head to GrooveLife.com slash SleeperDude. Use code SleeperDude to get 20% off all Groove Life products. That's the best offer you'll find, but you have to use my code SleeperDude for 20% off your order. One last time, that's promo code SleeperDude for 20% off your order. And as always, you can find the discount URL in the video description below. Thank you to Groove Life for sponsoring this video now let's get back to it i'm gonna go ahead and pull the oil pan off now and see what's under there we'll give a quick look at the rods and stuff and make sure everything's good to go i feel like open it and it's worse than the mouth <laughs> we hope not it didn't make any clanks when we turned it over upside yeah. down so yeah i didn't hear any pistons or rods falling out not flat tap at things they weren't any harm yeah moment of truth here we go I think it's supposed to have silicone in the Look at that oil pump. Well, I don't see anything that scares me in there. The filter looks fine. There's no chunks and pieces. That's nice. So here's the difference in our pans. This is the original one off the Galaxy that we're going to be reusing. So this means because this is a front sump pan, we're going to have to use the pickup tube off the Galaxy. And that means Ralph, has something to clean. Right? Yeah. So just a really super basic inspection is wiggling the rods back and forth on the journal. And if you have an engine that's knocking, the rod will wiggle on the crank journal. All those are not knocking. This has a gear drive. Look down in there. It's got oh, a gear wow. drive already. Son. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, this pickup is no good to us now. So we looked up our numbers. They're not the easiest ones to read on this one. The casting was kind of bad, but it looks like it's F1SE, which makes this a 91 to 96 302 Ford or 5.0, whatever you want to call it. So it's right at the end of when they were producing these things. I think they made them up until about 2000 in the Explorers. I think they made them in the Mustang until 95, I believe. I think 96, they went to the 4.6. So this probably came out of a Mustang after 91, if I was guessing. I, I knew it wasn't the original engine in that car. Mom don't want me to do this. No. But I can't go in this far without looking at a rod bearing. I think you need to leave well enough alone. <laughs> Let the magic out of it, as exactly. sloppy mechanic would say. I just gotta know. If it's got hurt rod bearings, I'd rather find out about now and put new ones in it than to find out about when we start this thing up. Come on, be good news. Well, it's not hideous. I don't see any brass showing or anything like that. You can tell it's had some dirt and stuff go through it, but I think we're good to go. These things only tighten to 25 foot pounds, so not much at all, according to the internet. I don't know why they chose to put a million bolts in these. Oh, man after my own heart, right there. <laughs> it's the MG. <laughs> he only put it on one side. You see my that? Boy. He didn't put it on the block side, except for right there. That's a weep hole. Is that good? It's if the water pump goes out and allows it to drain. Oh. It's already got a hog leg fuel pump on it. I don't know if this is a holly or what, but it's not a factory one. Ralphie's gonna go ahead and start cleaning on this. You knew Please. you had to do that. Oh, that's pretty cool, isn't it? Please. Since we're gonna reuse this oil pan, we gotta get some paint. I don't even know if we have any Ford blue around here. We might have to paint it Chevy orange. What do you think? Yeah. <laughs> so this is a 15, 16 crankshaft bolt. There's so much sludge in this. It's disgusting. So we have to pull the harmonic balancer off of here to get our timing cover off. You can tell this engine is externally balanced because it has a relief cut right in here. Some engines are internally balanced, some are external. If you ever take a harmonic balancer off something and you see a cut like that, and it's not just the same all the way around, it's an externally balanced engine. So. The flywheel will have the same thing. It'll have a weight somewhere on it. This thing is all gooped up, isn't it? Yeah. We'll have to re-goop it. Look at that. Ooh, what's that? Somebody has been grinding on the timing cover. 
And that is JB Weld. So they've ground it down to clearance it for the gear drive. I wonder Smart what man. brand of gear drive that is. So this is the eccentric that runs the fuel pump. Somebody's bent the tab over on it. So we just looked the number up. This is a Summit Racing brand. So this has been the big mystery is what is the cam? Because we were not told the specs. Is it a three quarter racing cam? Maybe it's a 13 16th. Maybe it's a half, seven eighths. I see some rust pitting on it right there. So it may have sat for a while. Okay, here we go. It's an Iski. 110 degree, 284, 294 hydraulic. It's got even more rust up here where it bolts up to the sprocket, but we'll keep that thing around. We may end up using it for something else one day. While I'm breaking sloppy mechanics, number one rule by doing this, I'm actually looking at my cam bearings and they look pretty good. Like with the rod bearings, they're not brassy or anything. So hopefully we're good to go with this thing. I believe that's as far down as we're gonna tear this thing. So I guess we'll jam the new camshaft in there, start putting this thing back together. Got to clean some gasket surfaces off. It gets a clean bill of health for me. I mean, it'd be nice to have a brand new short block and everything, but this one looks like it's in pretty good health. Here's the actual cam card if you want to see the specs for yourself. This should match up nicely with our build up here. Nothing too crazy. We weren't looking to build a all out nitro burn and drag car or anything. So this camshaft actually is a billet core. It's also had comp cams MSE process done on it. So. It's micro surface enhancement. It's where they smooth out the lobes. It makes them 65% smoother and it enhances the load bearing surface by 250%. It's really not that much extra cost for what you get with that service. And that's like a piece of jewelry, isn't it? Look at that. Or that around your neck. Normally with a flat tap it cam, I would put the assembly lube on that. But since this is a roller cam, I should be able to just lube this up with engine oil. It's a whole lot less harsh on break in with a roller cam. Now you want to beat the bearings out of the thing when you're putting the cam in. That's an important step not to skip. All right, Ralphie? Yeah. Having the cam gear on there helps get those last couple ones. There we go. You always want to make sure that it spins freely. If there's any binding at all, you better stop and reevaluate what's wrong. Now we're gonna put our retaining lock plate in there. You gotta make sure you get this right because you have an oil passage that comes out of there. So we're using these Comp Evolution link bar style hydraulic lifters because we plan on retrofitting this into a flat tappet cam is why we went with these these are a big upgrade they're supposed to have a big reduction in noise they have a better bleed down rate than standard hydraulic lifters and they work better at higher rpm so this should be a good upgrade i'm gonna soak them here in oil you're supposed to soak them in oil for a couple hours before you install them so we're gonna put them in here while we're doing some other stuff see the bubbles coming out where it's filling up the lifter with oil the bubbles we're gonna go ahead and pull this crank gear off of here since we're not running that gear drive anymore. So now we're gonna install our crank shaft gear. We're just gonna put it on zero because we're not super fancy and degreeing this thing in. You can advance or retard it by four degrees either way. It has markings for either one. So I soaked our timing chain and oil here. We're gonna go ahead and put it on there. This is a Comp Magnum double roller and we're gonna line up our dots together and we should be good to go on this. So whoever installed this last time bent this tab down flat. That tab is what locates it. Like this thing could free spin. So give it a womp there, honey. Oh God. Oh, I whomped it out, didn't I? Yeah. Well, my wife whomped it too hard. <laughs> we thought we had it good and then we realized it was just broke. Oh no. So we're gonna look for the old one in this galaxy. Yeah, we'll just use this one instead. So now we have a new problem. This cam came with two different dowel links and we put the short one in it because we had the tab with a two piece eccentric for the fuel pump, right? The one off the old engine is a one piece, doesn't have that collar. So it requires the longer dowel pin. So now I've got to pull the dowel back out of this cam and swap dowels. You getting it? Yeah. This is building engines, isn't it? One problem to the next, you always run into something unless you're just putting it back stock. At least this kit came with two. All right, let's try this again here. That's the fun part, isn't it? Yeah. Man, mom's taking Ralphie's job over here. I'm kind of liking it. <laughs> look at that, look how clean it is now. I'm getting it. This I'm thing's gonna look brand new, isn't it? I don't know about that, but maybe. So now with that longer dowel, it will fit on our newly cleaned up 289 fuel pump drive and we'll be good to go. 
upon further cleaning, mom just noticed that this timing cover is cracked through here. And look, the JB Weld they've used to install it. Yeah, that's not holding at all. So it looks like we're gonna have to get a timing cover for it as well. Hopefully the one off of 289 is worthy. How many times are we gonna have to make a trip out here and get more parts out of this car? Is it in good shape? Uncracked? Look at that. Look at all the junk in that water passage. Can I pick them bigger? Out? Why was that engine so full of stuff like that? It looks like that one's good to go, huh? Yeah. Well, they appear to be the same aside from maybe some bolt length differences, but that right there just wasn't going to work at all, was it, Ralphie? No. He must have put that JB Weld on with it oily. Actually, you can kind of see it's still oily underneath it right there. I don't see where he even cleaned it much. Usually, JB Weld will hang in there. This dude was in the way of the gears. I didn't even think about that. Mystery solved. Well, let's throw that in the trash and start cleaning that one now. Okay. So our next step now is putting the cylinder heads on. Now, our dowels are missing, if you notice, so we got to put some new dowels in there. We're going to clean this head surface off, but we're going to try to not get any dirt in our short block. So we're going to turn it where it's over on its side and clean these head surfaces and get some heads ready to bolt on. Yeah. This step right here takes a while, but you got to do it. Right, Ralphie? True that. True that. So me and Ralphie got all our gasket surfaces cleaned up without getting dirt in the engine. I guess we're ready to put the oil pan on now. We just need to get the pickup tube, which I believe is probably back out of the galaxy. At least we're getting a bump in cubic inches with this deal, huh? Yeah. That is one good positive thing from this. You getting it cleaned up, mom? I'm trying. It's looking better. So it was blue. Yeah. At one point, huh? It says C5, which would be 1965. Oh, Lord. Yeah. Remember, the, the numbers on the engine were 65. Yeah. It's about dark out here now. Yeah. There we go. We'll clean it up. It'll be fine. Why is he always trying to run me? <laughs> of course you beat me. Something else to clean? Oh, yeah. We got a lot more to clean. Oh, no. I guess while we're waiting on mom to clean all that up, we can go get the cylinder heads we're going to put on this thing, huh? Rocky and all them are already asleep. As soon as it gets close to dark, he huddles up with them wives and concubines. So the heads that actually came off our 289 were too rusty to even use. So here's the heads we pulled off this engine. I guess we're going to take them in and use them. Nothing like some cast iron. Golly, they're heavy, aren't they? Yeah. Good thing it's on a big block then. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't be doing this. You be carrying like one at a time. They've already had a valve spring upgrade, but it's unknown valve spring. I've learned over the years that you're better off to buy like a cam and get the correct valve spring from the manufacturer to make sure you got everything right. So we're gonna go ahead and swap the valve springs too. Let's look up the numbers on this thing though. So these are E7TE heads, which if you're an old Fox body guy, you've heard that number before. So these are made from 87 to I believe 93 in Fox Body Mustang 5.0s. I believe they're better than just your old Smog era 70s small block Ford heads. So this is a little bit better than what it could be. Let's get these things torn apart and cleaned up. Oh, yeah. snap, look at that. Yeah, it's a double spring. <laughs> so one of the advantages of having a double spring is if you break a single spring, that means you drop a valve and hit a piston. If you break a double spring, you have a second spring that'll catch it and keep it from coming down and killing your piston. So what do we need to take the valve springs off? A hammer and a socket. Exactly. Ralphie wants to give it the first shot here. Ooh, you gotta really smack it. <laughs> Table's a little high, too. Yeah. Okay, you can do it. <laughs> there you go. You just weren't bouncing it far enough down, probably. Yeah. I'd like to know what these are. I hate running something that I don't know the specs on. He already told me those springs weren't big enough for the cam, so that already scared me to death. Man, that's so much better than trying to use a valve spring compressor every time. Well, this is going to take a long time, so let's go to time lapse. <laughs> Our valve seats actually look really nice in this thing, so I don't even think we're going to have to lap the valves in. Score. But as you can tell, there's some dirt down here. So we're going to go ahead and pull all the valves out. We're keeping up with which number they were. We got them all numbered. You don't want to mix and match this stuff. Which one's the intake valve and which one's the exhaust valve? Intake? No. Nope. Intake? Exhaust? Yes. Intake right. valve's always bigger. 
So it's got the original Ford valve stem seals and our comp kit came with new valve stem seals. So we're gonna pop these guys off here. Our antique air compressor. So we're right in the middle of cleaning this and my wife just called me and said, Adrian's having her babies. So let's go. Yes. Wawa said she was gonna have them tonight. Oh my gosh, you've had three? <laughs> I don't know how she's had a wild one. Rocky's a grandpa. You did so good. What is it, girls or boys? These two are boys. That one's a girl over here. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you did good all by herself too, huh? Yeah. I predicted it. You did? I said it, yeah. I, I was like, I swear she's going to have a day. I guess we're done building engines tonight. <laughs> I'm done cleaning. I know that. I had to run in and wash up before I could touch these babies. <laughs> oh, it's, it's so, so cute. cute. Well, it's the next day. And Adrian just has a two-barrel milk jug and couldn't feed the third one. So mom is now its mother, I reckon. <laughs> this is how Rocky was raised right here. We're back. While mom's messing with baby goats and such, me and Ralph are gonna start putting this engine together. Mom got our timing cover, oil pan, and pickup tube ready to go, so we'll start putting that stuff on. We do need to put a new front seal on that timing cover, and Ralphie may clean up on these heads a little bit. He just can't help it, you know? He just gotta be cleaning something. The new gasket set came with a gasket for this, so I'm gonna use it. Hopefully this will work fine now with our oil pan swap. Thanks, Ralphie. Hey. How many Ugga Duggas do you recommend on this one, Ralphie? Three. There we go, that's the third one. I think I can get this seal out of here this way. Maybe. Ah, look at me go. We got a new one with our gasket set. We're gonna pop that thing in there. Get all that nasty oil out of there. You want this thing to stick in there. We are just barely gonna give it a skim coat here of silicone underneath this because well, this ain't a brand new engine. It's kind of got a rough surface, but we do not want to put the amount that the last engine builder did. You definitely don't want all that silicone inside your engine, the little bits going in and stopping up oil passages and your pickup tube. Is it taking the bottom? Yeah, she took a whole ounce, so that's good. A whole ounce. What's she weigh? A little bit over two pounds. <laughs> She's so small. <laughs> Too bad her mama couldn't feed them all. Yeah. This worked out good anyway because it already has our dipstick tube. All right, Ralph, where's the little, give me a short bolt right yeah. in there. These are stainless bolts, so we're putting a little bit of anti-seize on the threads so they don't stick in the block or anything. A couple different <laughs> lengths on the bolts and everything. I don't know if this is doing anything. Push probably no, harder when we did. We're just gonna snug these up barely, and I'm gonna put the harmonic balancer on it to make sure it's centered up in there before I actually tighten it all the way down. So we're gonna put our harmonic balancer on here. I put some grease on there so that seal isn't dry when this thing starts up. And this will center up our timing cover so the seal's not out of center and rubbing up hard against something it's not supposed to. Now we can tighten that up and we know it's centered up. How many ugly nuggets? Just a, ugh, like that. We got our water pump ready to go on. You need to like push this end down. Wait, that won't fit. No. We're hitting that with the water pump. Oh, Ford. And our old water pump on that engine is uh, no good. It's locked up. Cut that tab off. Well, you need to know where the top that is. I mean, do you really? Shoot. This water pump comes out the opposite side of the original. We just went out there and got so looks like we're gonna have to get a water pump from the auto parts store or something that's a bummer i guess we're gonna go ahead and put the oil pan on it now look ralph we're gonna trim off the excess here on the timing cover gasket dry off everything make sure we have no oil anywhere you always want to verify that your pickup tube is correct that is seven and a quarter inches from the oil pan right out of the pickup almost seven and a half so that is the correct pickup for that pan good job mom on the cleaning. It looks pretty good, doesn't it? It does. Wow. We should just look in. Something they didn't do when they put this oil pan gasket on was put a little bit at the corners. It's funny that they put so much on the water pump and timing cover, but none here. Nice that they put a reusable gasket on here, huh? Yeah. I like these one-piece gaskets. It feels like I'm putting this oil pan on backwards. I'm used to rear sump stuff, you know? Yeah. The Maverick was front sump when uh, I had the 2.3 in it. 
back in the Dizzy? Yeah, we used a uh, Ford Pinto oil pan on it to fit it in that Maverick. I'm surprised this pan doesn't have more dents in it. Most of our cars have a big whopper dent in the oil pan, but this one just seems to be a little rusty. You think this thing's gonna sound good, Ralphie? Yeah. Three quarter racing cam. It's got in it. Yeah. The bottom end, I think is all together now. We just gotta assemble the top end. Man, I wish our water pump would have been wrong. That stinks, don't it? Yeah. So when we ordered all this stuff for that old 289, we got this really nice pulley set from Scott Drake. You see it's got three bolts. <laughs> our 90s era 302 has a four bolt flange. So we are going to have to use the ones that were on it, which luckily it already has an underdrive crank pulley that's double. Why do they have to change that? I was really hoping to use a brand new pulley. Guess we're gonna have to reuse this one. Well, Ralphie wanted to put the bolts in this one. Check us out on other platforms at Sleeper Dude 88. We're gonna go ahead and put the Wix oil filter on it just to keep dirt from getting down you that hole. The Wix XP. Yeah, son, the XP. Don't, what? no, don't crank the hound up. We gotta pull it back off anyway before we oh. run it. I got these clamp pins. So I got this head cleaned up. All our gasket surfaces are good now. Ran it through the parts washer. Got all our valves back in. I put a little bit of oil on the. Now we're gonna replace our valve stem seals with our new valve stem seals from Comp. New retainers, new locks, and a new double valve spring set that matches the cam. So now that we got all our valve stem seals in, we're gonna put our new double valve springs, our new retainers. Ralphie's got the locks and an old tube of grease we found in one of our cars we bought recently. Oh Lord. So that should be fine. All right, Ralphie, you think you can get it in there? We even got in the right direction. You gotta drop them in the groove like that. Now that's in there. That was pretty easy, wasn't it? Yeah. I like to give them a little tap just to make sure they're seated good in there. We should be good to go. Now we just gotta do that. 16 more times. 15 actually. Ah, uh, you're right. Thank you for correcting me, sir. <laughs> so where you put your finger is dark now? Yeah. Wasn't that in that K-15 truck, I yeah, think? Yeah, it was. So it was parked for 38 years? Why are we using So we're using 38 year old grease that was under the seat? Hey, well it works. Not exactly. So me and Ralphie struggled a little while to put this exhaust one on. We kept wondering what was up. Look at the difference in the installed height between the two. So the exhaust valve, if you look at it, every exhaust valve, the lock ring here is much lower than this one. So I went ahead and measured and did the math and we're still within our limit. We're not gonna hit coil bind or anything. So I measured the installed height here and looked at what the coil bind height is on their website and we're still good to go, but that kind of freaked me out when the installed height was so much shorter on this one. Uh, you gotta check that stuff. Look at the thickness difference between the comp ones and the stock ones. I mean, those things are beefy, son. These are the springs we took out. I measured the installed height on these. These are correct for the engine. So I wonder what springs they had in here. He told me they weren't right for the cam, but yeah, I don't know what springs they had in here. One down, one to go. So you got this ball stuff figured out. Almost. <laughs> We're gonna go ahead and put our cylinder head dowels in here I ordered. Now I have been known to put some cylinder heads on without the dowels in place, and I've never had a problem from it, but I would definitely recommend it. Scraping this stuff and cleaning this intake that the fan sent us. It's a dual plane? Yeah. A dual plane um, weigh-end. That's pretty cool, it? huh? Yeah, got the donkeys. You reckon it's got any goat stomps in there? Yeah. So we're gonna run a tap through these threads. These are 7 16 14 threads. When you're putting new head bolts and stuff in, you always want to chase your threads just to make sure you don't have any gunk. Because if you got gunk in there, it's gonna throw off your torque specs when you go to torque the cylinder heads on. Right, Wall? That's right. So we're just using a steel core laminate Felpro head gasket. This says front, so I'm thinking it goes in the front. Because the deck height is so short in this, and we're using link bar style lifters, we're actually gonna have to put our lifters in before we put our cylinder head on. Kinda excited about this. This is my very first set of this style lifters I've ever had. So we're gonna set them down there, make sure they travel okay. And then the push rods go off of those, mm -hmm. which push the rocky back and forth. Rocker arms, yep. Which push the valve springs down, which push the air and intake gas in, and the burnt fuel out. 
Exactly. A big moment here, putting the cylinder head on. We went ahead and put the ARP Ultra Torque on the threads, these top five head bolts, because they are actually going to blind holes, so there's no water passage. But the bottom four, we put thread sealer on them because they go down into the water passage. You don't want that water seeping up past your threads. So Alfie's just running them down real easy with impact. We're gonna torque these. The sequence is like basically from the center out, it's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We'll go 30 pounds, then 50, then 70 pounds for torque. So Ralphie thinks he can torque these down. I know you can do 30 and 50 for sure. I can do 75. You can do 70? Yeah. Ralphie's gonna try to hit 70 foot pounds now. Hold on. That's 70. All right, you gonna torque the rest of them or you want me to? Yeah, hold on, let me take my jacket off. Let's see where you sit here. Oh, he's turning his hat backwards. <laughs> over the top here. Okay. <laughs> That was a terrible stance. Eat your veggies. Okay. Good job, bud. That's your first cylinder head you torch yourself? Yeah. Woo! So I got all the factory rockers here. We're gonna wash that up too while we're doing this. We can work together. Yay. Teamwork. <laughs> of course. I'll drop it down in there. Woo! Got it? Yeah. Man, hey. Ralphie and me have got this whole valve spring retainer and lock thing figured out, don't we? Yeah. We got way faster on this one. Right, Music. Good. Man, I'm wanting to put the intake on is what I'm wanting to see. Intake and carb. We actually have a brand new Holly carb. I forgot to mention that. And we have a weigh-in four-barrel intake that a viewer sent us, so that's awesome. Oh, Lord. Oh, gosh, Ralphie. <laughs> Come on now. And we're using the thread sealer on the lower threads that go in the water passages. There we go. Got it on there. Whee. Woo. Woo. Ralphie, I just can't wait anymore. We have to get this intake on right now. Yes, we do. I love putting the aluminum intake on something. So these guys actually hook on the head gaskets, which is really nice setup. It holds it in place for you. Right there. Yeah, pretty cool, huh? Incredible. There we go. Ooh. I love it. So once again, we're using our stainless bolt kit we got. It's got a little bit of anti-seize on the threads, but this is a dual plane wind intake. So this side feeds this side and this side feeds that side, if you didn't know. So it makes for a long intake runner, gives you good low end torque, a little bit of a higher rise intake. So this thing probably makes power all the way up to a 6, 6,500, somewhere around there, RPM. It ought to match up really well with our camshaft. With these small block Ford intakes, you kind of want to crisscross back and forth. The way the bolts go straight down, you can kind of crank the intake sideways if you're not careful. Are you getting more excited about it? Yes. I know I am. Well, me and Ralphie have decided to put a one inch carb spacer because I know from all the dyno stuff I've seen, it makes some donkeys. This is what makes the magic happen. We actually ordered this probably over six months ago for a different project vehicle and then never ended up using it yet. So we stole it for this one. So this is a double pumper, electric choke, 650 CFM carburetor. Very shiny, huh? Yes. I love my Holly double pumpers. That's what I used to run on my Maverick years ago. That's what I learned how to tune on. Look at that bad boy. <laughs> this is a little premature. We don't even have the push rods or rockers in this thing, but we got a carb on there. Will that fit under the hood, do you think? We may have to take the spacer off. We'll have to see if it fits under the hood. Well, that's gonna be it for tonight. And I've got to go to O'Reilly's and get the water pump for this thing and some paint to paint the engine with. I've also got to check our push rod link and see if the push rods that I ordered with this thing fit or if we're gonna to have to order something else. It's really hard to guess at the push rod length. It's really just guessing until you get it in there. Because deck height affects it. Your rocker arms affect it. Your installed height of your valves. Everything affects it. We got a lot done, but we'll see you guys tomorrow. Swap. What color are we going to paint this thing, huh? I'm not blind. This is something you can't let Squeezy pick out. No. She'd be picking out something like you. Well, it's got to be Ford Blue. Old Ford Blue or Ford Blue. I like this bright one. Let's make it bright. Okay. When I was your age, they were 99 cents at the Walmart. Yes. Oh my gosh. 
12 snap wrong water pump so i ordered the aluminum one instead of the cast iron and uh yeah it didn't fit so they had a cast iron version it looks to be correct and we got our paint here so i guess we'll have to wait it's going to be here in that two days true. well it's the next day we're going to go ahead and check our push rod length here since this is not adjustable rockers our push rod has to be really close so we're going to rotate it around until our exhaust valve starts to open and once it opens we know we can check our intake side we gotta be close there we go so the exhaust push rod just started to come up i'm not sure if you saw it right there or not so we should be able to check the preload on our intake side this is just the stock rocker and push rod here we're going to tighten this down and it's supposed to have about a turn and a quarter to turn and a half of preload and you can see right there we are completely bombed out we're still not even to zero last so these factory push rods are definitely too short for this setup. We're gonna drop this adjustable one in it. I pre-adjusted it to a little bit longer than the stock one. We're just gonna keep adjusting on it until we get the correct amount of preload in this thing. And we'll know we have the right length. You wanna move the push rod up and down until you get zero lash. Right there we're at zero. So that's only a quarter turn of preload. So we need that push rod to be even longer. So we're gonna spin this thing out a little bit longer try it again we are about three quarters of a turn it's gotta be longer again just come up short you know story of my life one and a quarter so that should be the perfect push rod length so this time we're going to rotate over till the intake comes up to maximum lift and then when it almost comes all the way back down then we can check the exhaust side one and a quarter so that should be the right length for both intake and exhaust so it was at this point in the video, I read the complete instructions and realized that I had put the lifters in backwards in the engine and we tore the whole thing back down. So if you look right here, I had the lifters facing this way with the link bar towards the cylinders. Well, it's supposed to go towards the lifter valley, except for like in one Chrysler engine where it's supposed to be the other way. So we tore the whole engine back down and rotated the lifters around the other way. And now we're gonna put the whole thing back together. What? How did that even mess it up? Or... There's an oil hole on one side of the lifter, but not on yeah, the other. I saw it. I thought yeah. it was a bubble. Let's put this thing back together again. Wee! Now we're back to where we were right before this. So we did get our water pump. Are you dry firing my carb, son? Get your hands off the holly, okay? And we are going to be able to use the Scott Drake water pump pulley with the other crank pulley because I mocked it up with the crank pulley that was on it and the water pump pulley that was on it and they didn't meet up. But the Scott Drake one matches up with the harmonic balancer one, so that was kind of weird. So while we're waiting on our push rods, we're going to go ahead and give this thing a paint job. We've already cleaned it quite a bit. I guess we've cleaned everything except for the block. On these small block Fords, there's not a whole lot of block to clean, really. And we're going to give this a coat of the Ford blue. Well, at least it's blue, you know. Come on. It's the best color. We might set some old valve covers over it just so we don't get paint on the brand new valve springs and junk. That would be good. You don't want paint in your oil passages. Mm been there done that we got some denatured alcohol here normally i would do this with like a pressure washer and some degreaser but we're inside the shop and the engine's already together so we're going to clean it with this just so we don't mess up anything getting it wet that's bringing the paint right off of it isn't it yeah i can't remember the last time we painted the engine <laughs> we usually end up putting them together and not painting them i don't remember painting them it's in a minute I think we can blow it off and pretty much be ready to paint Probably. Hopefully it's pretty oil free. Would have been easier to paint with the intake off. You know, when you're in a hurry. We are going to use these old valve covers that Ralphie cleaned up off of the F100. And I'm gonna set that on there just to block that off from getting any paint on it. How about you do the oil pan? I'll do okay, there we go. things that are closer mm -hmm. to vitals. <laughs> oh, okay. oh, that does, oh. What are you doing? What have you done? <laughs> it's barely warm enough for this. We're gonna take it easy. Is this leaking, Dad? <laughs> what have you done already? I didn't do anything. I'm just trying to paint. What the mess you got going <laughs> on? Uh, you need to put a glove on or something. You're gonna have it all over. This you. is. 
You slung it on my towel. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, honey. She stole my Crocs. It's spraying down too far. Okay. I knew something was wrong with it. It's spraying and hitting the rim of this and puddling up. Sorry, Wawa. It's okay. Take turns here. I literally love that color blue. Like, that is just like the perfect Well, that's color four blue. blue. Some of you Ford experts tell me exactly what years they ran this color. Because there was three different colors to choose from at the store. This was the lot, about the lightest color, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, this was the lightest option. There was like a really dark one and a medium one in this one. I like this. Who needs tape? When you got a dinosaur thing. I love the smell of spray paint. <laughs> oh my gosh. You paint like your mama. Your average person rattle campaigns like that, okay? You don't ask car paint. Look, yet. ready? You stop at the end, you overlap evenly. That's how you do it. Here you go. Okay. Don't paint like your mama. Woo! <laughs> hey, nothing like you told me to. <laughs> Ralphie hasn't seen the engine yet. Oh, Looking better, huh? Very blue. We just got one coat on. We gotta put another coat. Ralphie's not feeling good today. That's why he wasn't out here cleaning on it. You know how he loves to clean. Yeah. <laughs> got our fuel pump block off plate in the mail just now. So that'll go there. All right, let's get another coat on this thing. Woo. Since it's Ralphie approved. Woo. You should have painted it Chevy orange. Ooh, you're getting burned in the comments right now. <laughs> you don't care about them, they never blow up. Mm -hmm. You paint them, they blow up. So this one's probably gonna blow. Don't say that. I mean, this one won't blow. I think that's it. Two coats. Looks like it covered it pretty good, doesn't it? Yes. Love it. I mean, as much as I would love to throw the valve covers on it right now, just to see what they look like. You better We gotta not. wait. We gotta wait. Yes. Because we gotta get the push rods in there. Was her just too sleepy? It was too sleepy. Let me hold her. Well, the day has finally come. We got our brand new comp push rods here. 6.5 inches is the length we're using on this. So we're gonna go ahead and throw them in the engine. Well, maybe not throw them, you know? Maybe, maybe not throw them. We're gonna go install them in the engine and see if we have the correct preload now on our lifters. Now that we have the lifters in the right direction. I'm gonna go ahead and put some assembly lube at the end of where the push rod is and where the rocker touches the top of the valve stem. We're just believing this is gonna work. So right there, we're at zero preload. It's half a turn. Right there is a turn and a half. I think we're good now. She is out of it. She's so funny, she wants to be held all the time and sleep. Look at that, they're all doing their job now. I've been waiting for this moment. I'm all about some cool looking valve covers. Those are pretty cool looking. Are pretty, these are from Mr. Gasket if you want to get some. I'll put the part numbers to everything in the description. I love thin valve covers. I don't know why. Like that thing? Yeah, I love, I love that. I think that looks good on any older car, especially. I always forget about the breather. I don't know why I always <laughs> forget to get a breather. I always do this. So we don't have one? No, I don't have a breather again. Hog legs don't have breathers. Come on. <laughs> you get it? in there. Okay, you you can do that one. It won't go in? No. What was that one? It was already... What it, my end worked fine. Ow! <laughs> <laughs> he ran to the dipstick. <laughs> well, a dipstick yeah, to the dipstick. Got... <laughs> what, did you just say the dipstick ran to the dipstick? Uh -huh. Did you just pick up on it? Yeah. Man, it looks good. So we. We gotta get the pulleys and stuff on there now. Why is that like cross setting? It makes it tighter. We got our fuel pump block off plate because we plan on running an electric pump on this thing. <laughs> so this is an underdrive pulley. That's why it's such a small diameter. I have no idea what brand this crank pulley is. It just yes. came on the engine. So this upper pulley is from Scott Drake and it lines up perfectly with our lower one, even though the one that came with this engine doesn't line up with the lower one. So that's kind of funny. First try. Did you get it? I did. Let me, let me verify. <laughs> it works and it doesn't slip.
No, that's, oh, come on. That's it little, worked. That's it a worked. little off there. It works that? fine. Yeah, yeah. The that's actual it. tool this that fits it. this. Found it. There you go. Good I job. tighten that up with a butter knife. <laughs> you tie everything up with a butter knife. Uh. Wolverine. Okay. You get it tight? So this is the distributor I plan on using. It's just like a drop-in, small cap, HEI style distributor. Because this is a billet cam core, we have to run a bronze gear on it. So we're gonna take this cast gear off of here and put the bronze one on. It's only this way if you go to a billet core like what we have. Look. Cool. Here you go, Ralphie. Can I throw it? No. no. Oh. <laughs> That's unfortunate. Are you serious? Uh... I'm going to that joker out. We're going to have to. 0.469. And this is 0.505. So it's just over a half inch. So maybe if we run a half inch drill bit through this, maybe it'll fit in. Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Anytime you do like a performance engine build, it's just like hurry up and wait, isn't it? You put a couple parts on and you realize something else didn't fit because you're changing stuff in the engine. You're not putting it back stock. Seems to be that way. Yeah. All I had was a half inch bit. We'll see if that works. All right, let's see if she fits now. Yeah, it's a little tight, but probably the reason why we're running into this problem is because this is a just cheap Chinese distributor. Probably if I had a factory Ford distributor in this thing, we wouldn't have been having this problem. My thumbs are too big for this little pin. <laughs> there we go. So we got the engine on top dead center number one. I got plenty of assembly lube on our new bronze gear we got installed. I'm gonna set this thing down in there. There we go. See, it's all the way bottomed out on the oil pump drive shaft. And we'll take this back out when we go to pre-lube the engine, but that'll be right before we start it. I guess that's about all we can put on now. We're gonna have to get it off here anyway on an engine hoist. Well, you know how we end them off around here. We can't wait to hear this thing run, but we've already put enough work into this video, I believe. It'll be two hours long if we did all that. So we're gonna get the Galaxy in here and get this motor slammed in there. Let us know what you think we should do. If we saw something we did that maybe we should change or... I'm trying to decide whether to run the T5 or run the three speed that's in it from the factory. I'm kind of leaning towards running the T5 in it. Yeah. We could even take that old shifter and put it back on there, you know? Pouring one out for your homies. I am. I'm pouring one out for my homies. I'm showing my respect. Really like how the engine turned out looking. It looks really good. Hopefully it'll sound as good as it looks. Maybe I didn't put anything together wrong in there. I'm sure you'll let me know. Mm -hmm. But you should see a video soon of us putting this in the car. This will be the first time this thing's been running in like 30 years, you know? Who's ready to see the Galaxy Wagon run? That's what I want to know. Woo! I like that it's a country sedan, which is like the base model, the poverty model. I like that, personally. They made the country squire, which is like the decked out model. It's a bummer that we weren't able to use the 289 block. I was really hoping we would be able to use that one, but we weren't able to do it. Look the at that. Lip, the lip. It's like, if it's one inch above his head, he's just gonna lick. <laughs> there you go, buddy. <laughs> Look at that. Chubs. You know, I guess the 302 was an upgrade, though, from the 289, so. That might help us out a little bit and some torque or maybe some goat stomps. Hmm? What about that? I know we can't run the old 289 flywheel with this engine because the balance is different. We may just end up doing the T5. I don't know. We'll figure it out. Let us know in the comments what you'd rather see us do. How many goat stomps do you think that? You would think it would get around 300 maybe? Maybe it's 300 horses? You mean... Oh, 600 goat stomps. Yeah. Sorry. Are you getting all of them? Huh? Look at that. Look at this guy. <laughs> he's trying real hard he's trying so hard man if only he had thumbs he would own the world <laughs> wouldn't he <laughs> yeah <It's gaming. laughs> but you can check out our second channel app super dude 2 man that was a good one wasn't it you can check us out on instagram facebook and tiktok at super dude 88 you can call my wife's phone number at you can buy our merchandise down below we got all kinds of different shirts and stuff there's probably like a dozen of them by now. If you click down below, it'll take you to Springs website. We have more than just that. Thank you to all the members as always. Thank you to everybody that's super thanks. It really helps us out, doesn't it? Yes. It does. Correct. They like eating Lunchables. Oh yeah. And Vanyas. 
Agreed. We're gonna have to get back on the RV soon. We gotta reseal the windows, put our ladder on there. We gotta get the transmission installed, wiring, plumbing. We gotta go through the engine as well. We're gonna get back on the Corvette very soon. Woo! We had one box full of stuff come today. We got some more stuff coming very soon for it. But we gotta come up with some of the little detail things like valve cover breathers. You know, all the little detail stuff. Make sure our alternator will bolt up. <laughs> big thank you to comp cans for their help with this engine build also big thank you to holly we couldn't do it without them but i hope you like this engine build i know i did i love building engines it's just sometimes it's a little slower pace than what i really like because you run into issues there's just some things you don't know ahead of time until you go to assemble it so usually you run into some kind of parts thing that you're not foreseeing i'd also like to get the box top fairmont running that would yes. be nice. Maybe we can finally get something out of that junkyard running. I guess we better get Vainia her RC Kohler. She's gonna be really mad at me. Mm-hmm. For sure. Angry. But tune into the next video of this thing where you see us install this engine in the car and try to get it running. That's the plan. Then we gotta do brakes. Then we got some patch panels to put in and we'll have a completed car. Mm -hmm. We need to get some hoops for that thing that matches the back ones. Mm -hmm. Some skinnies yeah. in the front, you know? I don't know. He doesn't like that. that. Yeah, it's the dragon wagon. I don't know. We might do something different. The dragon but wagon. The dragon wagon. Let's go get by your RC Cola. <laughs> Words of wisdom of the day. Two wrongs don't make a right. Oh, here comes the whole herd. Where is she at? Who can get them eat first? Oh, she's dragging up the rear. Oh, here she comes. <laughs> Look how she's like front back, front back, front she's back. She's kicking it up. The noble steed. Here, here, here. She's a noble steed. There you go. Man. Hey, she backed off. Good job. Hey, you're taking, learning. she's taking her time now. Good job. What a deal. Come by Rocky. And Rocky Jr. 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 Jeez. Oh, you really drugged that one out. Bye. <laughs> Remember, Jesus saves, but George Nelson withdraws.